Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Friday, April 14th, 2017, and I want to talk a little more about iron batteries. It's something I worked on yesterday. I built myself a little prototype iron battery cell. I got about one volt out of a single cell, and those can be stacked up in series to make a higher voltage. So clearly the chemistry can work. It's not hard. You take an iron wire, hydrochloric acid, and a bit of an iron salt, like iron 3 chloride, and you arrange them properly and you have a battery. All the components of it are cheap. Iron wire is extremely cheap. The ferric chloride is not terribly expensive and hydrochloric acid is dirt cheap. The only thing that's a little tricky is a separator membrane. Now you could use a slice of carrot or a piece of potato as a, as a demonstration cell for, uh, for, you know, for school kids, but it's not going to work for a home storage system. So I made a polymer-based separator membrane myself it would be better to use something like Nafion, which has recently come off patent. So there are lots of good options for making these sorts of batteries. So I got a question today about whether one could DIY a home storage battery for storing electricity. And I think that this might be the battery for that because iron chloride, iron, these are all very uh, non-toxic and easy to handle. They don't oxidize in there. You don't need a glove box. It's a pretty reasonable task to assemble. The big question is the separator membrane. You need something to prevent electrons from traveling through your electrolyte. You need them to go through the wire. For school kids you can use a potato or a lemon if you've ever seen those home science experiments, but if you want to build something permanent then you need something else. And I've been working on a polymer membrane that might work. Uh, Nafion just came off of patent, and so that should be coming down in price. That's a good option. These are polymers that don't allow electron conductivity, but do allow ion balance to allow the battery to work. I think if you have a grid tie, if you're on the grid, then you're probably better off using net metering, selling power to the grid, and then buying it back when the sun's not shining. That reduces the overall fuel consumption of grid energy, which is great. It also is cheaper than buying a battery, which is also great. Don't duplicate infrastructure unless you have to. Now, if you're off-grid, you do have to, and so you'll have to build some kind of battery or buy some kind of battery, and maybe an iron cell is a good option for that. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, leave me a comment, uh, send me an email, tune in next time, and we'll look into it. We'll look into building an iron battery here in the Allen Lab.